Um, so here we are at, at this um, workshop called Advancing Mental Health and Performance, Earth by Space. It's um, a workshop that we, uh, which I did for the um, International Space University Space Studies Program earlier on this year uh, in a virtual format. Austrian is, is something I've been trying to develop in a, in a physical format, but as everyone knows, because of COVID, this is the best we can do lately. So hopefully over the next 12 to 18 months, we can actually develop this into something which we can do in person, um, which would have much more practical benefits um, for, uh, for everyone. So this is a bit of a, this is just an overview of the, the schedule. So we know what's going on. Um, I'm currently doing the introduction. Unfortunately, our second instructor is not going to be here, so I get 20 more minutes to talk. Um, I'm going to cover some of his material. Then we're going to do some yoga for 20 minutes. I highly encourage everyone to, to, to actually do the yoga. Um, it's it's uh, going to be just some standing up flow uh, movements. Um, well, I don't think we're going to be getting on the ground um, and some, some breathing exercises, etc. cetera. Um, after that, we've got um, Father David Braithwaite, who will be talking about some interesting theological, philosophical, neuroscientific concepts, trying to, uh, trying to tie many of our concepts together um, in, in, as we're talking about things that sometimes cannot be fully explained in science. Um, and then uh, we, we've got a very great speaker, Thomas Mechtesheimer, who is CEO of a, a, a neuroscience company using interesting technology. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Angeline Wilkes, um, is going to talk about leadership neuroscience and there'll be some interactive elements of that. Then we've got Christian Rappel, who is a, a former Luftwaffe fighter pilot. And um, he's going to talk about the applications of these concepts to his training, um, mission, uh, the, the preparation for missions, pre-mission, the mission and post-mission. Um, and um, then we have uh, Edris Nuri, uh, someone I studied with in um, Maastricht talking about goals and planning. And we're actually gonna do a practical exercise involving goals and planning, where we're gonna look at our, our goals and work on ways to make them better. And then we're gonna finish with um, Lachlan, who's gonna give us um, a tutorial through creating music. Um, in a, and we're gonna actually jump on a program and do that. Just wanna check the chat. Okay, thanks, thanks for the comment, Sarah. Um, and, yeah, let's get into it. So I wanted to start with this. Oh, no, didn't want to start with that. I want to start with this here. So when I was at the International Space University, I, I watched a, a lecture from an astronaut called Jean-Francois Clairvoy. And I'm a big fan of the French attitude to exploration of space and human space flight. And the key message um, that I took away from his presentation, which was something I had already kind of developed in my own mind is that a necessary condition to be an astronaut is the will to be there. So developing the desire or having the desire is usually already there, but allowing it to grow, fostering it and um, bringing it to reality is something that people often forget. They get caught up in the, the, the how to do it, which we get into the physical strength, the psychological uh, requirements, and of course the technical skills. But Time and time again, astronauts will say, I didn't, I almost didn't apply. And yet they became an astronaut. And that's the same thing for one of the recent astronauts. I think he's actually still up there at the moment. Um, uh, Thomas Pesquet, he said, I didn't, almost didn't apply. And that's the first thing you need to do. So just believing that it's something that can be done and then applying our mind and, and, and putting our will towards doing it is, is really important. Some of the other points from his, from his talk that I found that were really relevant to, to the program that I'm trying to build, astronauts are formatted as problem solvers. Um, definitely going to get into that more. Space is an analogue for life on Earth. Going to space tells us about who we are. Exploration is expressing our feeling of curiosity. And in terms of the people that go, diversifying the profile of the crew increases the capability of the group and that that's really something that i try to weave throughout all of all of the activities i do in, in this project and you can see from the, the extremely diverse group of instructors um, that that's what what i'm trying to achieve so 
just a bit of a broad view. I've probably covered a few of these things just now. Some of the concepts that I, I'm trying to tackle and I want to, I want to impart onto people is the ability to take the first steps towards something that seems impossible. I wouldn't be here doing this right now if I didn't, if I wasn't able to get myself into that mindset because who generally sits down and says, I, I think I can be an astronaut who also says, I think I can create a program that can train astronauts. And I don't want to say that in terms of look how amazing I am, look at my ego, but time and time again, I try to put myself in a mindset that makes me think, well, let's just assume that this impossible task is possible. And then therefore, what is the first step that I'm going to take towards achieving it? And just doing that in a re repetitive fashion enables progress. Another concept I want to um, talk about or, or bring into this project is the relationship between logic and creativity, um, particularly from when I studied mathematics, I, I, was, I got really excited by people like Rene Descartes, who were uh, at the same time philosophers as mathematicians. And there was a relationship between these two things um, where their, their, their ability to describe and understand enabled them, enabled them to create these precise mathematical models about how the world works. But you can't do that unless you can express and, and think in ways that are uh, different and outside the box. Um, practicality reinforces theoretical knowledge. So that, that's, again, something we're trying to do in these virtual workshops, but um, it's so important that knowing things is, is great, and, and, but, but being able to put them into practice and actually demonstrate them and um, then show people how to do things and have them do things is, is really the key. Interdisciplinarity and developing the whole self um, astronauts are incredibly interdisciplinary. They, uh, on a space mission, they, they do things ranging from uh, experiments, so therefore even writing reports. Uh, they're flying a spacecraft. They're fixing solar panels on the outside. They're growing plants. Um, they're growing plants. Uh, they're communicators as well. They're doing interviews with, with people on the ground. They're communicating amongst their team. So they have to have this incredibly wide um, skill set. And I, I think that often leads people to think, well, they must be superhuman. They must be, um, these people must just be perfect. But from what I've observed in, in reality, usually they have a set of strengths that they're naturally good at. And then the rest of the things they, they work on, they break the tasks down, they work on them, they become sufficiently good at as many things as possible. And they might have their particular bent that they're incredibly good at. One of my particularly favorite concept is instinctual training and development. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, you might see it come up as system one in, in some neuroscience concepts. I, I, I really like the idea of training the instinctual system to respond well, very quickly. And the process to, to improving that I find very fascinating. Um, and, and in the astronaut challenge, which I'll talk about briefly in, in these slides, um, is, is a system that I'm trying to develop that improves that, that improves people trusting themselves to, to take the first action um, and, and believe that they're gonna be correct in that first action. And preparation for the unknown. So astronauts are going to go to places where no one has ever gone before. They're gonna go for the first time ever. We can approximate what this is gonna be like. You can train and train and retrain. Um, you can learn all the theory, but nonetheless, these are still gonna be situations that no human has ever been put in before. How do we prepare people for this? How do we prepare them to make good decisions um, in, in these situations? So just briefly about my journey, um, I studied mathematics at Sydney University, um, where a lot, of, and a lot of these concepts came from there. Uh, then I worked in dementia research, and again, you can see where the neuroscience element might come in. I was involved with the International Space University, uh, still am in, in, a, in a loose way, but I was heavily involved for about two years. Currently, I'm working at the German Australian Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I have two roles. I'm an analyst in the energy cluster, which is highly technical, which, which I enjoy because we're looking at deeply into how projects and cutting edge projects like hydrogen can, can work. And I'm also a space coordinator. And as part of being the space coordinator, I'm looking at the synergies between the German and Australian space sectors. Uh, yeah, the German and Australian space sectors. And particularly in Australia, what is, what is our capability 
that can contribute to the global space sector and particularly engage with Germany. And one of those things is human space flight. Um, Germany has great capability in human space flight, obviously with the European Astronaut Centre being in Cologne and they have numerous uh, German astronauts. Um, and Australia has incredible capabilities in health research, biomedical research, and we're just gen generally a health conscious uh, country. So I think there's a good synergy there. And maybe in the future, my job will be running this program full time. Who knows? <laughs> See where it goes. Uh, and, and on the left, I just wanted to include that. Um, I never thought that I would end up meeting Buzz Aldrin, nor being able to spend half an hour talking to him. Uh, and the actual picture in that moment is me. I was I had to tear in half an, an astronaut sticker to stick it on his journal, but he, he kept it on his journal for the duration of the time that I, I saw him. So that's a pretty special moment uh, in, in my journey. So what is the purpose of astronaut? One, these are in no particular order. There's sort of four different things that I'm working on at the same time. To demonstrate that Australia has capability to contribute to human spaceflight, to demonstrate that there is value for people in the knowledge gained through human spaceflight, to encourage the adoption of fundamental and practical methods for improving health and well-being, as inspired by astronauts, and to provide a platform for aspiring astronauts to continue their journey. Um, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the theory and the drive behind this has, is, has come from my own interest in wanting to be an astronaut. Uh, sometime during my degree, I just said, what am I doing? What am I going to do with this knowledge? What am I going to do with my life? And I thought, well, I regret never trying to be an astronaut. So I might as well try. And since then, I've been trying to piece together what is like a, you know, trying to unpack what appears to be a black box to the entire world. It seems to be a path that has no clear um, direction, but I'm trying to put in some foundational elements that people could look at and say, well, actually, you can start there. If, if, you, if you don't know where to start, start with astronaut and you learn something about mental health or mental performance or skill development or how to build habits and um, become a better candidate. I thought I'd just slip this slide in quickly. Um, what's in the name? Well, astronaut obviously is a great pun on astronaut, um, but of course it, it rep meant to, it's meant to represent Australia. Um, but I, I really like the fact that Australian, Australians have a DIY attitude, give it a go-ness, they're adventurous, they're innovative and they're explorative. Um, I mean, if you just have to look at the foundations of Australia to see that, uh, at least, you know, Australia, the nation, uh, to see that it's a consequence of people who thought, let's go to the furthest place on the other side of the world and, and try and make a society. Um, there's so much in our foundation, in our roots as a country that uh, can be transferred into exploration space. And, and also the, the secondary meaning is the you, which is putting you in astronaut training. I want to bring as many people into this program as possible and help share with them the amazing benefits that, that's, that human spaceflight is creating for the world. And I thought I would include some of my, 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 poor, my poor attempts at creating new logos along my journey in the spirit of this workshop, which is to give it a go and to try new things and to share our work with each other. I'll briefly go through um, the types of programs and, and, and uh, offerings that, that I've developed in the past. First one is the astronaut challenge. Um, I do have a video. I don't have enough time to share the video, so I, I can share that with you all later, but it's on, it's on YouTube as well. Um, this just looks like a complicated mess of colors, but what it actually is, is a kind of amazing race style um, game where teams go through a variety of different challenges, um, testing very different skill sets, um, and they have to choose which members of their team are going to compete in which skill sets um, and they have very short periods of time to solve things that will probably would probably not be uh prob probably out of the capability of them being able to do them generally in that period of time so the idea is to repeatedly challenge them to to to, to go with their first instincts about how they might want to solve a problem for example building a computer a lot of people don't know how to build a computer um, but here are the components in front of you. You have 15 minutes to make your best attempt at assembling this computer. 
Um, one of my favorite ones in this workshop, I don't know exactly where, I think it was listed under mechanical, um, was build, assembling a bicycle. There's a, a really good quote, I can't remember who it was from, an astronaut that said, if you can assemble a bicycle wheel effectively, you can learn how to repair the space station because it's a foundational element. So I had a bicycle, I had a couple of bicycles and the, the tools to assemble or disassemble the bicycle. But in the difficult level challenge, the participants were wearing gloves or a boxing glove or a, uh, a dishwashing glove with cotton wool in the fingertips to mimic the, the, the lack of dexterity or tactile touch that an astronaut might have on the space station from their pressure suit. And they were sitting on swivel chairs. So when they were operating the, the tools to use the bicycle, Newton's third law was, was pushing them in the opposite direction, which mimics what happens in space. So trying to mimic analogous activities on Earth to give people the feeling of what it might be like to actually do things as an astronaut. Uh, something I'm working on and like to build in the future on top of what we're doing now is the astronaut program. It's kind of inspired by the Duke of, Ed Duke of Edinburgh program, if people know that, or, or cadets. Over the course of a year, completing skills in a variety of different um, fields. Um, for example, wellness and health, physical things like scuba or skydiving or sailing um, with an academic function, STEM and, and technical skills, um, and then also life skills and community things. Um, definitely an art project to inform that creative side and maybe a project or internship. So that's something I'm working on at the moment, which uh, I, hope, I hope to bring to reality soon. Then we have our workshop today, um, Advancing Mental Health and Performance. Um, this is our variety of lectures. I've sort of been over them, um, including our special guest, um, Chris, Chris Rappel. Um, I, I was going to mention Thomas Mechtesheimer's work because he, he has a combination of uh, neurofeedback and cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, so it's like a combined technology and psychology approach to treating neuroscience. And in my, my idea is that, well, these technologies are the kinds of technologies that might be one day implemented on long duration space flight. If we're sending people to Mars, they might need tools in front of them to help them regulate their mental health. Uh, and these kinds of technologies could be something that, that is used. 